I'm sorry, I walk fast. I always walk fast. It's a grueling race. I dread doing this every day. Body clock always ticking. Excuse me, ma'am. Is there any way for any change or any help? Get cash for the next fix or get sick. I do it every day. I mean, it's, it's like I'm a professional freaking beggar. It's a full-time job funding his daily heroin habit. Is there any way you can spare any change or any help? I'm trying to get some bus money, maybe something to eat. Like anything would help me a lot. Tyler Trowbridge, 33 years old and homeless, let Target 8 tail him. Excuse me, you can spare any change. The job site this day, Center Point Mall in Grand Rapids. It's okay, I'm sorry to ask. I hate being out here. You have a good day. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Man, I can't believe how bad I'm doing. It's crazy, I'm bragging about how good I am. I haven't made all I've done to scare everyone. But then. Thank you. Thank you so much. That would be awesome. I'd really, really appreciate it. Within 45 minutes. So I got, I got 30 bucks. I'm gonna call my man and have him meet me there. One hour, a quick nap, and a drug deal later, Trowbridge hit the bathroom of a nearby restaurant. Do you think anybody's going to learn anything from watching you? Oh, so this is, isn't the life. This is terrible. Someone shooting up in the restroom of a fast food chain you probably frequent just a few yards from diners isn't so unusual anymore. It sucks because I've f***ed up most of my veins. Needles and life on the street have ravaged his arms and hands. Here I'm frostbite. Like, see, they look like they're filthy, but I've actually scrubbed them many times. My hands are black because the skin's all dead and it's cracking. I worry that people will watch Tyler shooting up drugs in a bathroom and see a person worth less than them. It was Sarah Shade who connected us with Trowbridge. Are you worried that? Seeing the nitty gritty, the Tylers, is actually going to add to the yes. stigma? Yeah, I do, because not because it should, but I understand human nature. Still, Shade hopes that illuminating the darkest corners will keep the spotlight on the opioid crisis. These are real people. They don't become absent of a soul because they are using. And they're dying every single week. This is happening over and over and over again. Shade runs Unlimited Alternatives in Grand Rapids, a drop-in center where people with mental health issues can get warmth, a meal, help. I can't, can't fix Tyler, but I can try to help the system that's around him so that he can maybe have more availability to help that he needs. Shade is pushing for faster access to medication-assisted treatment. Drugs like methadone and suboxone cut withdrawal pain and cravings while people do the hard work of rebuilding their lives. There's solid research showing Matt significantly ups chances for recovery, but stigma remains. The unfortunate irony this day. So I'm gonna shoot the box in here. Trowbridge's dealer wouldn't sell him heroin, only crack. But after smoking that, Trowbridge was still desperate to shoot something. The needle's part of it. I mean, it's, the needle's part of the addiction. So he turned to Suboxone he'd bought off someone with a legit prescription earlier in the day. But here we have someone who is abusing the very drug that's supposed to help people get off of opioids. Correct. Still, says Shade, it's a lot safer than heroin and harder to abuse. Suboxone, which is supposed to be taken by mouth, has naloxone in it, the overdose reversal drug. What's the positive about Tyler shooting up Suboxone? He's not dead. If harm reduction is the best we got for the today, good. Do you care if you die? Yeah, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Like, it's not it's not because I love life. Tyler Trowbridge's graduating class remembers him as a good person who was quick to help you out. Now they're trying to return the favor, but there's one piece they're hoping you can provide. First though, check out what's happened in the week since the story aired. So we graduated about 15 years ago. The yearbook theme in 2003, which path will you take? I haven't heard anything about half the people I went to school with. What Stacy Peck could never have dreamed of. Excuse me, ma'am. Is there any way to spare any change or any help? That she would one day see her old classmate on TV. I do it every day. I mean, it's, 
It's like I'm a professional freaking beggar. And I was like, this is Tyler. This is a kid I went to school with and he's like, a good person. Like Peck knew Tyler Trowbridge as a low-key but big-hearted member of Grant High School's class of 2003, a drummer in the band all four years, now 34 years old and homeless in Grand Rapids, hooked on heroin, begging for money so he could shoot it up. The needle's part of it. I mean, it's, the needle's part of the addiction. It felt like I was gonna throw up, honestly. The video footage just, it was like, he can't go down like this. That's when Peck turned to social media and Grant's class of 03. I shared the article on Facebook and I was like, guys, like this is Tyler. And everyone was like, what are we gonna do? Like, what are we gonna do? They started with GoFundMe, stressing the money would not go directly to Trowbridge. In a week's time, they'd raised more than $4,000 and dozens of prayers and encouraging words. Did you think your paths would ever cross again? No. Never, never. They never even hung out in high school, but the day the story aired, Peck, who now lives near Grand Rapids, reached out. Since the then, the pair has worked as a team, like gotten Trowbridge into a hotel and back onto methadone, the drug that helps stabilize users so they can wean from heroin. Peck even drives him. Like for me, it was that first morning when she came to pick me up for the clinic for when my orientation. It was terrible. He was just thrashing and moaning and making these noises that you just don't want to hear a human make. Think about the worst flu you've ever had through, you know, a bed sheet, a, a blanket, a comforter. He has soaked those in sweat. This whole thing just seems so surreal that like, somebody that like I haven't seen in so long, someone that's married, someone that like has no obligation or no tie to me in any way, shape or form, is just so willing to give up so much time and effort and energy to just to be there for, I mean, like, I need that so bad. And, but you know, we're like, having fun. Dude, though. we are. We have a That's, blast all yeah. day. It's Trowbridge says he doesn't know if he'll ever use heroin again. Says he can only promise his best effort. Peck says she knows the risks are very real of relapse and disappointment. It is what it is. It's like if, if he totally ghosted me and, like, I couldn't get a hold of him, I would feel devastated because I feel so positive about what we have going on and I want this so bad for him. So, yeah, if he But no matter what happens, Peck chose, says like, she will never regret trying to give her old high school classmate the best chance possible to forge a new path out of the darkness. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I felt like he wanted help. He said on the side of the road, you know, I don't want to die. And so that was like another part that was just like, there's hope for him. As for how you can help, Trowbridge, who's getting stable on methadone again, is living at a hotel for now. He needs a studio or one bedroom apartment in or near Grand Rapids. And Peck is hoping this story will prompt someone to step up and lease an apartment to him. They have the money, they just need someone to have the heart to give him a chance. You'll find their contact information inside my story online and on mobile. I'm Target 8 investigator Susan Samples. On our way to the dentist. It has been an extraordinary ride. Final destination, a new life. But first, uh, Tyler Trowbridge, a new smile. All right, I'll let them know you're here. There's a stigma behind addicts, you know, that we're all like terrible, dirty. Hi there. Thank How are you, you guys. Good. I want to put that behind me. I just want to like get rid of the traces of being an addict, you know, because I don't want to look back. Actually. You have to initial each line. Down. Tyler Trowbridge is tired of hiding painful, decaying teeth. I'm getting six teeth removed, so it's pretty, it's a big deal. Just as big as what he's having done. Do you have any questions for me? Is how it's even possible. Right there in front, yep, that's the one that he showed most when he smiled. So. Well, I had a couple of people come to me to talk about Tyler. Dr. Jake Miller is working on Trowbridge's teeth for free. They asked me if I wanted to get involved and I was 
easy to say yes. I was excited too. What we're going to be prescribing you is Miller recruited Dr. Water. Mark Jessen to do the extractions. Yeah, whenever you're ready, we'll get you we'll get you comfortable here. Both men are donating their services entirely, including partial dentures to replace teeth lost to 15 years on heroin. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by getting you a blood pressure cuff here, okay? okay. I just feel privileged to be a small part. I heard, I've read the story and I've been following along and see how many people have come out to help him. It's a list that is long and growing. Stacy Peck is keeping track on her blog. She was the first to spot her old classmate on TV. It was like, he can't go down like this. They started with GoFundMe. Peck, who controls the money, got Trowbridge off the street back onto methadone, medication that eases painful withdrawal. After too many no's to count, they found Trowbridge an apartment and full-time work. He slipped once early on, but today he has eight straight weeks clean with the drug tests to prove it. Tyler has really made great progress. Erica Bradley is clinical director at Cherry Health's Southside Methadone Clinic, where Trowbridge gets his daily on-site dose, mandatory drug tests, therapy, and check-ins with doctors. Bradley says long-term recovery requires not just the desire and will to quit, but also an entirely new environment, away from old habits and triggers. So to have that level of support for a client, it, it really is helping to set him up for success. Bradley only wishes the clinic's other 1,000 clients had the support Trowbridge now does. From new teeth to churches covering a month's rent, strangers donating furniture, volunteers giving rides, or even just hanging out with him. Seeing Tyler's success is why we are here. It's why we come here every day, because we help hopefully save more people than we lose. Um, are you going to die out here? I don't know, probably. I'll probably die. It wouldn't be possible for any change or anything. When we first met Trowbridge, he had already nearly died from overdose three times. There's something up there that's freaking keeping me going, you know? Now he thinks he knows why. I, I want to help people. Having a, a sleeping bag in a tent, like that will save lives. Like, in his recovery, die. Trowbridge is connecting life. with like, parents who've die. lost children to opioids. So what you're doing is amazing. It's okay. It's okay. If anyone sees me walking down the street, and he has plans too to share his firsthand insight on rehabs, what works and what doesn't. But on this day, how are you feeling right now? Anxious. Kind of nervous. Tyler, how are you doing? Because of Trowbridge's addiction history, Dr. Jessen will use a new drug to ease the pain of six pulled teeth, a non-opioid called Expero. And that will release pain medication over the next three, four days. We're just gonna take our time with you, okay? You just relax there. Yeah. A few very swollen days and one partial denture later. So stand by him oh, and okay. I love it. That was like the best smile you've done so far. It's like all your confidence is in your smile and your teeth, you know? So it's awesome. Yeah, pretty amazing what one little appliance can do to yeah. make things feel better. But there is nothing little about the difference doctors Miller and Jessen have made or the power of community. And I don't ever plan on going back, so it's just time to move forward and, and like start the, you know, a different life. I'm very proud of you. You're doing Tonight at 7, there's a new chapter tonight in a West Michigan man's incredible journey from heroin and homelessness to now recovery and redemption. Tyler Trowbridge wants to do for others what the West Michigan community has done for him. So all new at 7, Target 8 investigator Susan Samples is here with Team Tyler's new plan. Marley, this project is a big challenge, but so was helping Trowbridge get off heroin into a methadone clinic, an apartment, and a job. They have done all those things. Tonight, the 34-year-old from Grand Rapids is 11 weeks clean from heroin. The next project, fundraising to build a new community-centered rehab facility. I just want to give back. This I is Tyler to Trowbridge good. today. This... I don't want anyone to feel bad for me. ...was him three months ago. What's happened in between? She kind of put a, you know, like a mayday out. Is amazing. Hey, we need people to come and help this guy. So then people just volunteered, signed up to come and hang out with me. We're just excited to, to be able to recreate what we've done with Tyler for so many other people. Stay
Stacy Peck graduated with Trowbridge from Grant High School, but lost touch until she spotted him on TV last February, homeless and hooked on heroin. She reconnected with Trowbridge and called on her network of Grant High School grads, family, friends, including Wendy Botts. It all just feels like it's meant to be because like everything just flows. Botts' own son, Jordan Blau, died from an opioid overdose a year ago. I'd like to think that he's looking down, proud and helping us. Sorry. Bot says helping Trowbridge get clean is helping her move forward on her own grief journey. Now, Team Tyler has a new goal, to build a new residential rehab facility, a campus on 10 to 15 acres. The homes are going to look like farmhouses. Everyone will have their own studio apartment, and then the main floor is going to be communal space. Community support will be critical, volunteers key, people willing to spend time with residents, building new connections, rebuilding lives. It is incredibly ambitious. Right now, the, the best estimate of what we're going to need is around 10 million. How are you going to do this? So right now we are speaking with seed investors and um, we have a whole team of amazing people. It's just fit everything. Every, we haven't met one person yet who has said that's a terrible idea. So we're going to do our best to kind of build a new community around people and show people that, you know, people, you know, deserve a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance. We know that's often what it takes. Relapse is common and part of the recovery journey. Journey. Here is how you can help. The team is holding a pop can drive this Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Forest Hills Foods on Cascade Road. Forest Hills, I am told, has been super helpful. Bring your pop cans to donate. Bring your questions, your ideas. They are raising friends, funds, and awareness of their new project. They're calling this facility Dirt City Sanctuary. The project was inspired by both Trowbridge and Jordan Blau, Wendy Bott's son who passed. You will find the link to the project's website and their Facebook page. It's up and running. It's all inside my story online and on mobile. Wow, what a group of driven people. Very driven, very committed, and I don't, you know, I wouldn't bet against them right now. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a great cause. It's mm. something that needs to be done, and they are out to make it happen. They definitely are, and, and all of the folks that they've talked to say it needs to happen. I mean, they're talking to people in the recovery community, doctors. Everyone knows that we need to throw everything we have at this right now because of this opioid crisis. Exactly. So this is another facility, uh, a different way to do it, bring the community in. So we'll be tracking their progress. I'm sure we'll hear from them again. Yeah. Susan, thank you.